All right, some other things in terms of reactions with acids and bases that we need to be aware of um, is the effect of the chemical structure on acid behavior. So there's a couple things that are going to affect um, acid strength. Number one, you've got the polarizability of the HA bond. So this comes into play if you remember the strong halogen acids, the strong halide, um, hydrohalides, hydroic halides, <laughs> whatever they're called, um, were HCl, HBr, and HI. HF was weak. Why was HF weak? Because HF is holding on to the, the hydrogen so tightly. Um, so H obviously is going to have to have the partial positive charge. And this makes no sense. So finishing up our conversation about reactions of acids and bases, we're going to look at the structure a little bit to kind of help us predict um, if we can determine whether or not the acid or base is going to be strong or weak. So in terms of acid strength, you've got several factors. Number one, the polarizability of that hydrogen anion bond. Um, the H obviously has to have a partial positive charge. If the H has a bigger electronegativity than the quote unquote anion does, that's not going to work. Um, in metal hydrides like NaH, hydrogen has the partial negative charge. So it's going to behave more like a proton acceptor. It's going to behave more like a base. So in this case, the H is going to behave like a base and bond um, to OH minus, perhaps. Um, you also have cons to consider um, the nonpolar HX bonds act as neither. So if you have no polarity, um, you're not going to have any situation. So again, it depends upon what atom the hydrogen is bonded to. Hydrogen has to be partially positive in order to be an acid. Um, it also has bond strength as an effect um, on acid-base strength. So think about the halogens, the three strong halogens that you learned, or the three strong acids that result from halogens were HCl, HBr, and HI. Remember that as you go down a period, the electronegativity is decreasing. So the strength of that bond, the ability of that atom to pull the hydrogen in, is decreasing as you go down. HF is weak. It's holding on to those H's much more strongly. So the stronger the HA bond means the weaker the acid is because you can't lose that H as, rel as easily. And idea number three, you got to think about the stability of that conjugate base. The greater the stability of the conjugate base, the stronger the acid's going to be. So if that conjugate base doesn't want to accept an H+, that means the substance wants to stay ionized, that means it's going to be a, a leads to a strong acid. Um, what else to take a look at? Let's look at binary acids. Um, the binary acids are controlled by bond polarity, which ultimately means electronegativity. Um, so if you take a look at these various substances, some of the stuff we've already talked about comes into play. Um, as you go down a group, the electronegativity is decreasing. So you're increasing the strength of the acid. As you go across, the strength is increasing. So these guys are not strong acids at all. You've got, um, they act as very, very weak bases. So they're more likely to accept an H plus than to donate an H plus. Um, you've got weak acids here and then you've got strong acids here. So as you go across a period, acid strength is going to increase. Um, as you go down a group, acid strength is going to decrease. Let's take a look at some more structure. How about molecules that have OH? Are they going to act as an acid or a base? So whether the molecule loses the H or the OH depends upon the electronegativity of the atom that the OH is actually bonded to. So for example, metals form an ionic bond. 
with OH. So the electrons are completely transferred and the ion that's created is an OH minus. So a metal with an OH is going to be a base because of that strong ionic bond that results, this OH gains the electrons. If you have nonmetals bonded with OH, however, um, you have increasingly greater electronegativity to form covalent bonds. So as the electronegativity increases, the O is held in more tightly, but the OH bond becomes weaker. So as a result, you wind up producing something that is more acidic. It's more easy to lose just the H than it is to lose the OH. So for example, methanol is really neither. The C has a pretty low electronegativity. It doesn't pull these electrons very strongly, and so the bond between the O and the H stays strong. However, if you get to something like hypochlorous acid, now the chlorine has a much bigger electronegativity. So it's pulling oxygen's electrons towards it more um, tightly or more strongly, which means this bond is weakened. The electrons are going to be pulled closer to oxygen, which means now this H plus can come off. So it really depends upon what kind of atom the oxygen is bonded to to determine whether or not you're going to have an, uh, an OH be an acid or a base. So organic alcohols are going to be neutral. You've got oxyacids because you've got anion. Oxyanions are going to be acids. Um, Oxymetals are going to be bases. Um, so if we take a look at those oxy acids, um, how do we judge how strong they're going to be? So you've got HCl, HClO, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4. How do we judge their strengths? Um, so it depends on the, the structure and the electronegativity of that central atom. So remember that these are anions, so only the O's are going to be lost. So they're going to act as acids. By increasing the number of oxygens around the central atom, it causes the acidity to increase because now you have more oxygens pulling on the electron density and that OH bond winds up being weakened. So for example, we've taken a look at all those um, chlorine ions. Hypochlorous acid has a Ka of 3 times 10 to the negative 8th. You have just one chlorine pulling on these electrons, so this thing is held reasonably tightly. But as you go across and add more oxygens to the chlorine, now the electrons are really being pulled towards these other oxygens. And so you have a much um, stronger pull of these electrons to the rest of the molecule, which means this H plus is going to come off more easily. So perchloric acid winds up being a strong acid as opposed to chloric or chlorous because you've got three oxygens pulling as opposed to two or even just one. Last idea that we want to take a look at is carboxylic acids. I mentioned this before. Because you have, again, this extra oxygen on carbon, this hydrogen is going to be held more weakly, more weakly, less strongly. <laughs> and so this will be able to get pulled off. If this weren't here, I would have an alcohol, and then there's not enough pull here to pull this oxygen off, or oxygen, hydrogen off of the oxygen, but with extra oxygen, just like you saw in the last slide, this extra oxygen is going to pull the electron density much closer towards the rest of the molecule, and then this H plus is going to be easy to come off. So alcohols typically are not acidic, but carboxylic acids, ergo the name, um, are going to be acidic. And there is your stuff about reactions.